Hey, good day to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Happy Thursday, everybody. I got you an update on the tropics, not only with that big snowstorm, major storm that's coming, also what's happening at the La Palma volcano. Because now it seems like even though it's cracking open more and more lava's coming out, now it seems like it's becoming a tourist attraction. Plus, I'm still showing that big storm is still coming for the tropical update, but not only in the tropics, it looks like it could be affecting the northeast. I'm going to show you what I have for you, including an update for Invest 92L. Now it's being an Invest. So if you've never been here before, hello, and my name is Mark. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I am all year long. I just don't upload from Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown to Sabbath. But I always make sure you have all the information you need before Sabbath starts. All I ask is share this information on social media. I hope others find the information on what I'm showing you. If you don't use social media, just hit the like button. YouTube was suggested for you. And remember, you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Links in the description. Now, for your severe weather today, remember this link is always in the description for you so you can see it live. You are in a marginal area right here for Florida, also in this region here, with some storms coming in this green section for today. And by Sunday, when that storm forms up over Texas, it's gotten a little worse with your severe weather threat. Not only to 15% now, now you have 30% chance of severe weather, and it's going to be with the winds. And here's the cities and states for the severe weather for Sunday. Now the Euro is still showing come Sunday evening going into late Sunday. That we will still have two systems, one in the Midwest, one in the South over Texas. And this is where your severe weather threat comes from. Then six hours later, according to the Euro, it all bottles up to a strong storm for the Ohio Valley. So there's a chance for the Ohio Valley to be getting some winds from this as it comes by. And as that snowstorm starts to build up, it really does get strong according to the year and bring a lot of winds, especially for the Midwest as it goes up on that higher ridge. So the winds are starting to pick up some for this outcome. But I'm still showing two different snowfall amounts. But the Euro does show that from the 11th all the way to about the 15th is when that cold dip is coming in. And you can see that here starting in on the 11th. You have the cold air coming in while you still have that upper level low surface low coming towards Texas bringing y'all some winds on this direction but the cold air will come in and it will be a cut off low from the jet stream that will bottle around the southwest so all the cold air is leaving it but so is the winds that was hitting the west coast and as it goes over Colorado and Wyoming which is really going to get nailed with this snowstorm you can see the winds start to really pick up very violently as it goes towards the Midwest. When you look at the snowfall rates for every six hours, according to the Euro, a lot of them is three to seven inches, most of it. It don't start picking up till it goes on a northward push towards a higher ridge. Then it starts dropping heavy amounts, major snowfall, especially for Wyoming, for hours. And the total amounts, according to the Euro, is still very heavy, especially for Wyoming. So for your colors, you have one to five inches in the blue. You have five to 10 inches in the pink, 10 to 15 inches in the dark red, and 15 inches plus in the orange. And the mounts have even come down some, even according to the Euro for Wyoming. Gillette and Sheridan, maybe 20 inches now with Casper, maybe getting almost two feet. Now, according to the Euro, the first storm that comes in within the next five days will bring 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts to New Mexico, western Texas, up by Dallas, Oklahoma, Kansas City, and Missouri will get some of that high winds. And then for five to 10 days out on that second storm that comes out, it's gonna be even more intense uh, winds. It'll bring 60s to New Mexico, also Colorado. And higher elevations of Colorado is gonna see more than 60s. It's up to 70, even 80 miles per hour damaging wind gusts that will be coming by. That is higher elevations. But also the Dakotas, Wisconsin, even Indiana can get in on this 50 and maybe 60 miles per hour wind gusts, according to the Euro. If you zero in on Colorado, I even found 93 miles per hour wind gusts right here in this section. Now this is a higher elevations. This is a little west of Denver. So it's definitely in the higher elevations. You got Denver over here and it's a little west of Denver. It's going to be in the higher elevations with a very strong wind gust. Although I did see 50s coming around here as well. The GFS confirms that by Sunday, you do have these two surface low pressures, both of them pretty strong, but this will be bringing the winds to the deep south. And as you go through, you see it does bring it as one good strong system over the Ohio Valley, although it's not showing just as strong as the Euro show. Euro showed a very strong system bringing some very high winds. Then as that next system comes through, you see it gets quite strong and all the way down towards Texas with the winds as it drags all the way up 
strengthening still to 989, 987 in the Midwest, and then carrying off to the north. And the winds are still showing less for GFS. It confirms that within the first five days, it will be 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming from Texas towards Indiana, with the worst part being in Kansas and Oklahoma. That's 50 miles per hour wind gusts. And when you go from five to 10 days, it shows that second system will still hurt New Mexico with 50s and 60s, and it will be somewhat towards Nebraska, Wyoming, some for Colorado, but it's not as strong as the Euro is showing. The GFS is confirming that from the 11th somewhere to the 15th and 16th is when that next dip of cold air is coming, and it might struggle along to the northeast still with a little bit of cold air, maybe on the intercoastal parts of the northeast. But when you go every six hours according to the GFS, you see all of it is three to five inches every six hours. And the heaviest is for southern Montana, Wyoming, and some for Colorado, but it disappears after that. And the GFS does bring more snowfall towards Montana and Idaho. So it's one to five inches in the light blue. It is five to 10 inches in this pink, 10 to 15 inches in this dark red, and 15 plus in that peach color. And it shows a lot less for Gillette and for Casper as, as well, almost a foot less for Casper. But both of them are showing that Sheridan will get at least a foot and a half, almost two feet of snowfall. Now I'll continue with the tropical update in just a moment. Remember all the links are in the description to help save you time. I wanna talk about this La Palma volcano update real quick, because not only did the flights get canceled, now they're canceling their flights all the way until the end of October. The UK tour operator has halted flights to the Canary Islands of La Palma because of the ongoing volcanic eruption. They have canceled flights and holidays for at least the next three weeks. That's what the officials said because the volcano is getting more aggressive. Now you go to Invalcan on Twitter, link in the description, you can see this big massive delta that's forming from all this lava going into the Atlantic Ocean and it is getting big and all this hydrochloric acid is still going into the atmosphere. And if you look right here for La Palma, you can see there's high sulfur dioxide that does go in the area, and it looks like it starts, it starts to clear away a little bit for them, but then the wind shifts and it's gonna bring it right back over the islands once again. So all the way till Saturday, people in La Palma need to watch out for the air quality. But after that, there could be some different trade winds that could open that up for y'all and get that out of there. And the eruption has been getting more violent because now it has two more cracks that has blown open in the volcano. And now you can see there's well more lava flows that's coming from this volcano. It's not just one or two anymore. Now there's three. Video in the description. Not only are they big lava spews still coming up, they still have lava bombs that they have thrown out. And it's still flowing all that dangerous lava. But now they have people that think it's a good idea to make this kind of like a sightseeing attraction to be close to this volcano with all this lava, which is, in my opinion, very crazy. And you can see the lava bombs that's still blowing out of this volcano, big long rivers of lava still going out to the ocean. But now you have people that actually think it's a good idea to be close to this. I know there's some of them that are investigating, but look at this, now it's like a sightseeing attraction to see all this massive lava flow, that is crazy. I personally don't think that this is a good idea, but tell me what you think. Do you think this should be a sightseeing thing? That is just way too close to this lava, especially with lava bombs spewing out this come up. What are you doing? Now, this is a picture of the new lava map of what's going on with the lava. And they actually noticed that a decrease in earthquake activity, even though it's been still violent, but it's been coming from 10 to 15 kilometers depth now instead of the 30 like it was. And this is a new update on the depth and the magnitude of these earthquakes. And you see how we had them at 30 kilometers, but lately still a very active, but it's only going to 15 kilometers. It's not going all the way to 30 anymore. Now the lava flow has not changed much, but the earthquakes have been less frequent during the past 24 hours, and there is now a trend of deflation, which could mean that the magma chamber pressure finally started to sink. Now this could change, because of course it will be very active, very high, fountains still spewing out, still going onto the same river flow of lava out into the ocean, but now they're saying that the intensity of the eruption has been slowly decreasing although this can change, but at least there are reasons to hope for the people living in the area that the eruption might be calming down sooner than later. And your tropical update with 
The new Invest 92L is still 10% in 48 hours, 20% in 5 days. And the NAND 3K shows that in 36 hours it actually forms up a surface low, but it just sits there and spins for a while because we have all these cold fronts coming by, which is high pressure that will be blocking it from going anywhere north. So it will stay there for a number of days and spin around until it gets a clearing to head north. The GFS shows that it's actually in 48 hours when it gets a surface low and when it starts moving it will start headed north but it will somewhat be on the weekend of a storm. Then after the cold front passes it's already too late it gets elongated and it heads out. Not really no threat, no worry for anybody. The Euro does agree within 48 hours it does get a surface low but it shows that it stays close to the east coast and it goes up to the northeast bringing some rainfall and some storms before it starts to head out. You can see that here, GFS in five days shows very little rainfall for the east coast of North Carolina, but a year on five days not only shows that in Virginia, but it shows some rainfall for New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, eastern Pennsylvania. Some rainfall will be coming out of this within the next five days, up to two and three inches. But if you notice, in the next 10 days, not only do we have a void down here in the south because of that surface low, that upper level low, that brought y'all the rainfall. We do have a void over here in the northeast, this is according to the Euro, like something is going to be sitting right here and spinning within 10 days. And the GFS agrees. They both agree, not only for what we had in the south, but we're going to the same thing imitating in the northeast very soon. Just in the next five days, the GFS could show that it might bring 20 miles per hour wind gusts, maybe 30 for the coast of North Carolina. The Euro don't show that. The Euro shows that it will be in the Northeast and mostly it'll be 30 miles per hour wind gusts, mostly for Southern Jersey, Maryland, Delaware. Not a whole bunch of areas gonna get involved in this because it will be going away. But Euro is still showing on our updraft or potential velocity anomaly that we still have a strong system coming sometime around October 17th, all the way to the end of October. So far, Puerto Rico, you're okay. GFS shows that this forms up a little bit past you. It stays a tropical wave until it comes by so there will be some rainfall but so far it shows that it does stay a surface low pressure you get another surface low pressure over you that passes by within the next few days but none of these form up the one on the western caribbean stays there for quite some time because of all these cold fronts pushing everything south and eventually starts making its way towards the east coast and starts riding up the coast so when you check the gfs 10 days out it's, it's already too far as it is but so is that monster storm that everybody's talking about. But maybe something can form up over the northeast, as well as that surface low that's coming out of the Gulf. So far, the GFS shows it'll stay weak until it goes towards the east coast. We could get a storm down to 997, bring some fierce winds, maybe even some snowfall in 10 days towards northeast. And it's not the only one that I showed. It could be a second system that could come after that. So you see the surface low go up to east coast, the GFS shows it stays in the Western Caribbean for quite some time, pushed down by the high pressure. Another system could brew up over the Northeast, bringing even stronger winds for everybody. So it all depends. And so far, that gets down to a 979. So we might have a couple systems come to the Northeast, a little too far to tell. But I think it's something we should stay up on. And so far, that's the update on everything, guys. I would have done it a little bit earlier, but I was waiting for updated information. And I'm glad I did, because before... The run showed that we're going to have some snow in the northeast, and it could be a possible nor'easter, but the update shows that that's not possible. Maybe 10 days out, so it's got pushed later, so maybe it could happen later. I'll update you on that. I do hope you all have a great day today. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. God bless every single one of you. Now let's move on with our day with the Word of God. Amen. Psalm 3. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. 
Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. Amen. And remember, Selah means think about what you just heard. His blessings is upon all thy people. All power does go to Yahweh, the God of Jacob, our Father. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a very blessed Thursday.